10 Psychological Hacks You Must Know to Control Any Situation Focus on what you can control and ignore everything else. This concept is born from a renowned Stoic ideology known as the dichotomy of control. It is a philosophy that encourages the understanding and acceptance of the things we can and cannot control in our lives. At its core, it is most eloquently explained by a quote from the Greek philosopher Epictetus who said, the more you seek to control external events, the less control you will have over your own life. Quote serves as a reminder that attempting to manipulate aspects of life that are beyond our jurisdiction, such as the actions of others or the unpredictable nature of life itself, can lead to a sense of helplessness and chaos. In contrast, if you focus your energy and efforts on the elements of life that fall within your control, you cultivate a powerful sense of authority over your destiny. This could be your perspective, your emotions, your actions, or even your reactions to external events. This doesn't mean that you become an omnipotent force, but rather, you gain the ability to manage your corner of the universe effectively. The paradoxical challenge with this ideology is that many people struggle to fully comprehend the extent of what they can control. They may be aware that they should respond positively to events they can't change, but this is merely skimming the surface of what the concept of control truly encompasses. Responding positively to uncontrollable events is important, but it shouldn't be the only strategy. It's similar to trying to win a chess game by only moving your pawns. Yes, the pawns are crucial, but the game can't be won without understanding and utilizing the complete chessboard. To truly master any situation, you must delve deeper into understanding what exactly you can control. You have to identify and leverage the tools at your disposal to influence various scenarios. This could mean understanding when to take action, how to manage your emotions, or how to respond to others. Mastering control in your life is not just about being reactive, but being proactive as well. It is about understanding the forces at play your life and knowing how to navigate them to your advantage. It is a journey of self-discovery, self-improvement, and ultimately, self-empowerment. And what better way to start this journey than with these 10 psychological hacks? These tactics are just the beginning, the first step in understanding and harnessing the power of control in your this exploration will help you confidently face any situation that comes your way. The 10 psychological hacks are a great starting point. The pause. Let's say you've just asked someone a question and you're not entirely happy with their initial response. Instead of immediately interrupting them or pouncing on their words with another quicker question, try something different for a change. Just stay silent, remain quiet, and let the silence do its work after they've finished speaking. Now, the power of silence might seem counterintuitive, especially when you're committed to get the most out of the conversation. But the truth is, when you allow a pause to linger, something remarkable often happens. The person you're speaking to, feeling the pressure of the silent gap, might feel compelled to fill it. And in most circumstances, they'll expand on their original answer providing a more comprehensive and nuanced response than what you first received. This is not a new concept. In fact, public speakers are frequently taught about the importance of the pause. Harnessing the power of silence and allowing it to punctuate their speeches not only creates a dramatic effect, but also helps them to command the attention of their audience. It's a subtle yet powerful way of keeping the crowd engaged, hanging on to their every word. This technique is also very effective in giving the person you're conversing with an opportunity to gather their thoughts before responding. It's not uncommon for people to blurt out a half-baked response because they feel rushed to say something, anything, without having the time to think through their answer properly. Or sometimes they just might not feel like engaging in a conversation with you. However, by providing them with a few extra seconds to process what's been said, you facilitate their ability to formulate a better, more thoughtful response. This approach doesn't only elicit quality responses, but also breeds respect for you as a good listener, which is an invaluable trait in any conversation. This method works super well in negotiations. It's critical in these situations that once you've stated your position, you allow a pause to follow, even after they respond. You might feel the urge to immediately justify yourself and continue speaking. However, this often undermines your argument. When you try to justify yourself and continue speaking, you're doing yourself a disservice. 
The intricacy of an offer or an opportunity is a fascinating concept. When you crave something from a person you are unacquainted with, it's not always the best tactic to launch a direct request. Instead of outright asking for the desired object or favor, it's typically a better approach to frame your need as an opportunity. This subtle change in the approach makes the request more palatable, as people are usually more open to accepting offers than they are to conceding to demands. To elucidate this concept further, let's delve into an example from my personal life, a scenario where I received two direct messages or DMs on a popular social media platform. Both of these messages were sent by individuals I had never met, and their primary goal was to extract money from me. But the manner in which they went about this was strikingly different and, as a result, so were my reactions to them. The first message, Exhibit 1, was curt and slightly aggressive. Hey KP, are you down a convo? It lacked any form of context, leaving me puzzled about the sender's intentions and slightly distrustful. There was no element of an offer or an opportunity in this message, just a demand for my time and attention. The second message, Exhibit 2, took an entirely different approach. The sender introduced himself as Marv, a certified brand strategist, and outlined his capabilities and services. Hi KP, would you like to 10x your following? I'm Marv, a certified brand strategist. I help creators grow on Twitter without stress. Let me know if you are interested. Otherwise, happy to chat and connect. This message, while still having the ultimate aim of parting me from my money, was framed around an opportunity. It gave me the choice to engage or not, and it clearly stated what was being offered. Marv was not asking for he was presenting a service that could potentially benefit me. The two messages wanted the same thing, but their strategies were vastly different and with varying results. So, who do you think I responded to? Naturally, I was drawn towards Exhibit 2. Despite not taking up Marv on his offer, I was intrigued. This is because he had framed his request around an opportunity for me. When you carefully frame your requests to strangers as opportunities for them, rather than as demands or pleas, they become more receptive. They are more likely to consider your proposal because you're showing them what they stand to gain. This subtle shift from demanding to offering can make all the difference in how your message is received and the response you will get. Reduce your expectations. This phrase, though seemingly simple, carries a profound message that has stood the test of time. There is a deeper philosophy that it entails, something we as humans often forget as we journey through life, engrossed in our mundane activities. It implies a shift in our approach towards life, a reset of our mental framework that could potentially offer a life-changing perspective. Let's delve deeper into this notion. What does it mean to reduce our expectations? On the surface, it may seem like a call to limit our dreams, to settle for less than what we deserve. However, that's a narrow interpretation that does not do justice to the true essence of this philosophy. When we talk about reducing expectations, we're not advocating for a life lived in the shadows of mediocrity. It's not about suppressing your ambitions or stifling your potential. Rather, it's about understanding the distinction between what we can control and what we cannot. It's about accepting the uncertainty and unpredictability that life inherently comes with. You see, more often than not, our expectations are not just about us. They extend to the world around us, the people in our lives and the situations we find ourselves in. We expect the world to behave in a certain way, for people to act according to our guidelines, for situations to unfold as per our plans. When these expectations are not met, it results in disappointment, frustration, and despair. But what if we adjusted our perspective? What if we focused more on our actions, our responses, rather than the outcomes that are beyond our control? What if we derive satisfaction not from the fulfillment of our expectations, but from the effort we put into our endeavors? Isn't that a more empowering way to live? This philosophy is not new. It dates back to the Stoic philosophers, who believed in the power of acceptance and the wisdom of discernment. The ancient Stoic philosopher Epictetus, one of the most influential figures in this school of thought, opined on this very subject. His words of wisdom have resonated through the centuries, striking a chord with anyone seeking peace and contentment in life. Please subscribe, like and comment if you found value in this content. Also hit the notification bell for more content like this.